So you take about a gram of resveratrol every day? Uh, I do, and I've been taking that since about 2004. And uh, I, but I, but like I said, it's you can't just put it in water and drink you gotta it. You got to add some fat to it. Yeah, so I, I typically have some yogurt, a couple of spoonfuls, not a lot, because I'm trying to fast until dinner. Uh, but I could mix it with olive oil. Olive oil recently, as we mentioned earlier in a previous episode, um, seems to be really good for activating sirtuins, but also you can dissolve resveratrol in it. So you get a twofer. You do. I, I don't have a lot of it. There's a lot of calories in olive oil. I don't want to break the fast uh, severely. But, uh, you know, mix it with a bit of vinegar and basil leaves and it doesn't taste too bad. Okay. So resveratrol, you're taking about a gram a day in the morning. Uh, also in the morning, you take NMN. I do. And there you don't have to worry about food. It's dissolved easily. You can put it in water or swallow it, put it under your tongue. Um, and so I do that. That's my main combo in the morning. How much uh, NMN are you taking? In the um, again, it's gram, but that's not a guess. That's actually based on the human studies that we've done that show that a gram over 10 days raises your NAD levels about twofold. And that's sort of the dosing amount that we're seeing in a lot of the human studies now, both the past studies and, and the current studies that are yeah, ongoing. I take one gram of NMN every every morning, along with my resveratrol. The reason is in humans, we know that that doubles NAD levels, which is important because someone my age has half the levels of NAD than I did when I was 20. But you can go as high as two grams and triple the amount. It's important to mention that I take these at a certain time of day based on science as well. I take these in the morning because that's when the natural rise in NAD and SIRT1 activity should happen. And we actually know this, that the SIRT1 CERT NAD cycle is part of our body's natural 24-hour clock. SIRT1 regulates a protein called BMAL that controls the genes that tell us whether it's night or day, should we be hungry or not, whether we, should have, whether we have jet lag or not. And I do find, anecdotally, that NMN is remarkably good at preventing jet lag as well. I can reset my body's clock sensibly through this SIRT1 BMAL pathway. You're also taking metformin? Yes. How much? When? Uh, I take 800 milligrams at night. Okay. And you take that at night because? Well, because doctors tell me that it's a good time to sim simulate a fast. Um, I take it with my dinner just after. And then through the night, I'm presumably having low levels of glucose. And my body has all the benefits of stimulating those repair pathways, those survival genes. And that's the most recent thing that you've added to your regimen? It is. Actually, what happened was uh, I had terrible blood biochemistry. I was eating badly. I gained weight. I wasn't sleeping. I was stressed. And those numbers just went through the roof. And I said, I got to do something. So I went on NMN and things were somewhat rectified. And then I added metformin and they really got back to my optimal. We mentioned earlier uh, some concerns about uh, exercise and metformin. Uh, your practices, were that concerned? Yeah, I pulse metformin. It doesn't sit well in my stomach anyway. So on days where I know next day I'm going to exercise and lift weights, I might skip metformin that night before. Um, and then there's also uh, spermidine. There is. You can buy it now. It's, um, there's a, a company that makes it in pure form, very low levels of gluten. And just the last few months, I've added that to my protocol. And we'll have to see how my numbers look on Inside Tracker. Okay, so that's not that's not something you've adopted and you're like, I'm definitely sticking with it. This is, I'm adopted and I'm testing it out to see how it works. I am. And I actually, I advise that company. It's the first supplement company I, I am advising. And I did that because I wanted to look at the human clinical trials. And they, they look really promising as well. How much of that are you taking? Uh, a gram as well. Okay. You are also periodically taking fisidin, kirsidin, uh aimed at uh, senescent cells. There are clinical trials being run out of the Mayo Clinic for fisidin and for kirsidin. These are high doses. They're typically two grams taken one day a week for a matter of months. I'm myself, I'm on a maintenance dose. I take about half a gram of each uh, every day. Let's take this morning through night just really quickly. Resveratrol, one gram. In the morning with yogurt or olive oil. NMN as well. A gram, yep. Fisidin and Cursidin. Half a gram in the yogurt. Spermidine. Definitely spermidine, yeah, in the morning, about a gram. And then in the evenings, if you're not working out the next day, metformin, how much? 800 milligrams. That's it. That's it. Now, you're not most people. A lot of other people are going to be different. You don't advise people, but it might be a good place for people to start their conversation with their doctor, though, yeah? Well, I think so. Uh, most doctors are open to looking at, say, inside tracker data and hearing about the latest science. It's very difficult for them to keep up with it. It's one of the reasons we're doing this podcast in the first place.